gonna say oh. I'm just gonna go and have a quick snack. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome Sarah Millican. Thank you very much for coming to my show. Uh, it's much appreciated. Uh, I was going to start off with a bit of advice. I'm not really very good at giving out advice. I give an example of how. I was in a supermarket and I saw this young couple wandering round and the girl said to her boyfriend, have we got everything? And he said, I think so. And I looked in their basket and all they had was a bottle of rosé and a cucumber. <laughs> <laughs> and I just thought, there's no way they've got everything else they need in for a salad. <laughs> And what I should have said is, lube, love. <laughs> That's what you need. Lube. But I didn't. She's <laughs> got to learn the hard way. <laughs> well, the bit of advice I've got is for the ladies in the room. I've discovered, as a woman, how you know whether or not you're overweight. It's during the throes of passion when your partner picks you up. Whether or not they say, one, two, three, first. <laughs> my favourite joke. <laughs> it's getting less funny as the days go on. <laughs> well, thank you very much for coming to the show. The show is called Chatterbox because that's kind of what I've always been. Uh, talking was sort of the only thing I was criticised for at school. Uh, I mean by the teachers. I was criticised by the other kids for loads of things. <laughs> Something of a nerd. It's really hard to believe, isn't it? <laughs> oh. I think it's quite cool that the thing I was criticised for is now my job. That's quite cool, isn't it? Fuck you, teachers. <laughs> Just hope the same fate didn't befall the school bike. <laughs> At an early preview, a man came up to me and he said, is your show Chatterbox based on the film Chatterbox? And I had no idea that there was a film called Chatterbox. I got in and I googled it. Such a film does exist. Uh, it's American, it was made in 1977. It's not available on DVD, which gives you a fair indication of the quality of the thing. <laughs> and the film Chatterbox is about a woman with a talking vagina. <laughs> so that man who came up to me <laughs> must have thought it was gonna be a live stage version. <laughs> he, must have, he must have walked in and gone, well, that microphone stands too high for a start. <laughs> But I have managed to get a hold of the film on video, proper old school, and I've only seen the first two minutes, but I've already decided that it's brilliant. In the first two minutes, a man and a woman have sex. They finish. She says something like, that was lovely. This doesn't sound very American, does it? I can't really do accents. I've made it sound more Geordie than it actually was, haven't I? <laughs> that was champion, pet. <laughs> That's what I say after sex. <laughs> Unless it wasn't champion, I'm no fucking liar. <laughs> so she's relatively positive about the experience, and then her vagina goes, it was all right. <laughs> How many times have you wanted to say that? <laughs> It'll do. I'll do it probably on my own later on, don't worry. <laughs> Why that the women are laughing and the blokes are doing this? <laughs> this is gonna be shit. <laughs> But I, uh, it's nice to be out among so many people. I, uh, I do spend a lot of time on my own. I live on my own. I do like living on my own, though. When I first decided I wanted to live on my own, my mum and dad don't really understand why people would want to live on their own. My mum said, people only live on their own if they've got no friends. <laughs> and then my dad made me look up the word hermit in a dictionary. <laughs> But my dad, get, he, he did give me some good advice when I was looking for flats. He said, I don't think you should get one that's got a balcony. <laughs> What with living on your own, there will be a high suicide risk. <laughs> Just wondered if I should have been bearing that in mind when I was viewing properties. You know, is that oven, gas, or electric? <laughs> is that light fitting really strong? <laughs> Could it hold a decent weight? <laughs> 10 stone. Fuck off. 11 stone. <laughs> and a half. <laughs> and another fuck 
broken hole. <laughs> But I do, I, I like living on my own. Does anybody else live on their own? Give us a wave if you live on your own. We've got, we've got a nice lady here. What's your favourite thing about living on your own, love? The telephone. The telephone. I like that you did that. <laughs> just in case, I, you know, it's just the north I live in. It's not, you know, <laughs> the dark ages. <laughs> the telephone. What do you, what, did somebody not let you have a telephone in the old days when you lived with other people, you poor bugger? Did you live under the stairs? <laughs> In what way the telephone? So I can speak to people, she said. <laughs> no, I know what a telephone's full of. <laughs> it's gonna be one of those nights, isn't it? <laughs> Who else lived on their own? Give us another wave. Hello, Flower. Nice lovely lady at the back there. What do you like about living on your own, love? Walking around naked. Walking around naked. There's a confident woman. <laughs> I, I've got a friend who lives on her own. I said, what's your favourite thing about living on your own? She said, whenever I do a massive fart, I go, good girl. <laughs> <laughs> you can have that, if you like. <laughs> Lady at the back, uh, is it a flat or a house that you've got? Flat. A flat. And if somebody broke into your flat while you were in it, what would you hit them with? Have you thought this through? Not so much. No, no, well, let's have a think now. If you're, like... <laughs> We've got a fixer. If you're like in the living room, for example, is there something to hand that you could clobber somebody with? A remote control. A remote control, you see? <laughs> Multi-purpose, I can watch whatever tell you like and I can fucking hit somebody. <laughs> no, because I asked a lady recently and she didn't know either and I said, what's normally to hand? And she went, empty bottles? <laughs> so I don't even think you'd notice if somebody broke in. <laughs> I don't care who you are. <laughs> Shut the door on your way out. <laughs> so I can feel a fucking draft. <laughs> My friend's got a round ass bat down the side of her bed. Uh, I mean, for protection. Oh. Um, <laughs> but she's been told by a policeman that that's not allowed. It's classed as an offensive weapon. The only way she's allowed to have a round ass bat down the side of her bed is if it's accompanied by something it would normally accompany. So now she's got a round ass bat and a round ass ball as well. <laughs> And I'm the same, because I've got a massive knife and a massive fork. <laughs> so if somebody breaks in with a big lump of steak, I'm champion. <laughs> but I live in a flat as well, and the flat directly opposite mine has been empty the whole time that I live there, so I just never bothered getting any curtains. And I regularly wander around in just me knickers, because I'm 35 and I don't give a shit. <laughs> But a friend ran, came around for a cup of tea and she said, have you noticed that some young lads have just moved into the flat opposite you? I said, oh, I hadn't noticed. She said, don't you think it's time you got yourself some curtains? So as far as I'm concerned, if some young lads are looking at me wandering round in me knickers, I'm still the winner. <laughs> just wonder how long it's going to be before they get fucking curtains. <laughs> Look at me. <laughs> Shh. <laughs> Please. <laughs> like an animal at home, I think that would make the place feel a little bit more sort of cosy. Give us a cheer if you've got a pet at home. Yes. There's loads of you. See, I'd quite like a cat. If I could have any animal, I'd probably have a cat. But I can't have a cat because my boyfriend's allergic to cats, so I can't have one. Button. Well, precisely, Flower. <laughs> we'll split up and that'll sort it out. Most people don't have something to look forward to at the end of a relationship, do they? I can't wait till he starts fucking other women. <laughs> I'm after the pet shop, won't you? <laughs> But if I did get an animal, I'd have to be careful, because when I've had animals as a child, I always loved them a little bit too much. <laughs> There's a name for people like me, it's a hamster squeezer. <laughs> <laughs> Look at his little face. <laughs> when I was about seven, I had a little dog and I loved it so much. <laughs> have you ever stroked a dog so hard you could see the whites of its eyes? <laughs> Every stroke along its back, its little back legs buckle because of the pressure. <laughs> I do worry about my boyfriend. Because <laughs> I love him so much. <laughs> love him so much! No. <laughs> Look at his little face! <laughs> Spunk's supposed to be red. No. <laughs> Don't do that, that's not fucking funny. 
now is probably quite a good time to tell you that I'm a lot ruder than I am on the telly. <laughs> to brace yourselves. <laughs> I tend to feel guilty as well. The thing I feel guilty about the most at the moment is the fact that I don't give blood. Give us a cheer if you give blood on a regular basis. Yeah. It's a few. Could always be more, couldn't it? I think it's the marketing that's to blame because I heard the advert on the radio and the advert goes like this. Would you like to save a life? And I thought... <laughs> Not really bothered. <laughs> Do I know them? But I've heard that you get a half hour sit down. Is that right? You get a half hour sit down? Yeah? yeah? And you get a cup of tea, is that right? Yeah, biscuit. Oh, <laughs> biscuit. Did you know about the biscuits? <laughs> Who said biscuits? Where are you, love? <laughs> nice lady there. What kind of biscuits do they have? What's the best biscuit that they have at your place? Bourbons. Uh, oh, bourbons and somebody in the middle went, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Got a big bourbon fan in tonight. <laughs> so, can anybody do The bourbon's pretty good. Can anybody do better than a bourbon at their blood place? Club biscuits. Club biscuits. Who said that? Where are you, fella? Hello, fella. Do they have a variety of club biscuits or just the one flavour? I'll just go for the orange ones. You just go for the orange ones. <laughs> You're not a hero at all, are you? Just going for the free orange clubs. <laughs> Excellent. We've got. Are, are we going to get any better than an orange club? I don't know. Party Who's, what was that? Party rings. Party rings. <laughs> <laughs> are you nine? <laughs> like on a plate, all fancy. <laughs> That's what I'd want. Jelly and ice cream as well. That would... Party rings. I haven't had a party ring in years. Can anybody do better than party rings at Orange Clubs? No, that's it. They've got... No, I'm sorry. I could, I could compete with the lady with the bourbon, but I'm fucked against the Orange Clubs. <laughs> but we, you see, this is the sort of thing that we need to know, isn't it? This should be in the advert. The advert shouldn't be, would you like to save a life? The advert should be... Do you like sitting down? <laughs> Bloody love sitting down. Do you like cups of tea? I love cups of tea. We've got party rings. <laughs> oh, if you've got party rings, why don't we see if you need some fucking bone marrow while we're on? <laughs> I did a show in Manchester and a lady shouted at, at my place. If you pretend you don't feel very well, they give you a sandwich. <laughs> oh, oh, prone mayonnaise. Oh. <laughs> but I, uh, in this job, I tend to travel mostly around the UK. I'm from a place called South Shields originally. Have we got any Northeasterners in? Yay! Excellent, the loud women. Hello. Uh, <laughs> no, welcome. Thank you very much for coming. Because uh, I. I mean, I, I'm from South Shields, but I actually live in Manchester now, and I mostly work around the UK. Occasionally, I get to go abroad. I went to Australia last year for the Melbourne Comedy Festival, which was great. Uh, it was great until it came time to come home, when, because of the fucking volcano, <laughs> got stranded for an extra week, and you find you don't get any sympathy of your friends if you tell them you are stranded for an extra week. My friend said, you are stranded for an extra week in Australia. <laughs> Well, boo fucking who? <laughs> I said, yes, but listen to the word that you're using. It's stranded. It's not a good word, is it? You could be stranded on the end of Brad Pitt's cock and you'd want to go home eventually. <laughs> I mean, after a week or so, obviously. <laughs> for snacks, if nothing else. <laughs> I think that explains why his girlfriends are always so skinny. Doesn't provide enough snacks. <laughs> But while I was in Australia, I got a phone call from the fraud department of my credit card company inquiring why I was spending quite so much on my credit card. She said, can I check a couple of transactions with you? And I said, of course you can. The first one was a cash point withdrawal and I had withdrawn the money, so that was all above board. The second one, she said, you spent £102 in a place called Holtz. And I went, uh, um, uh, yeah, uh, yeah, that's right. Uh, it's a chocolate shop. <laughs> And she went, £102! <laughs> and I went, yeah, it was for presents? <laughs> for me. Because <laughs> I was nowhere near Brad Pitt's cock. <laughs> but I did get a new nickname while I was out there. I've never had a nickname before. I've been called things, but that's different, isn't it? <laughs> I think that's bullying. <laughs> My nickname is the Cake Pigeon. Because <laughs> whenever I walk past a cake shop, walk past. 
whenever I press myself up against a cake shop, I go, ooh. <laughs> because I talk about cakes and puddings on stage, sometimes people bring cakes and puddings to shows for me, which is lovely, but can sometimes be a little bit weird. So a lady came up to me a few months ago. At the end of the show, she handed me a small round fruit cake and she said, this is for you. And I said, that's lovely, thank you very much. What a nice thing to do. And she said, I'm sorry, it's just that. But it's all we had in. <laughs> I said, have you been looking through your cupboards? It's not the fucking Harvest Festival, pet. <laughs> you bought a ticket, you can just come to the show. <laughs> Which really pissed off the woman behind her who was standing with a tin of fucking peaches. <laughs> I have developed, people call it a muffin top if it hangs over your jeans, don't they? A muffin top. I don't really like that name, so I've started calling mine my cake shelf. <laughs> it's nicer, isn't it? Because it sounds like a good place to keep your cake. <laughs> Somebody said to me, are you pregnant? I said, only if I've been fucked by Mr. Kiplin. <laughs> and yes, it was exceedingly good. But I'm a bit of a, a bit of a worrier. I don't, really, I don't worry about age anymore. I'm 35, I'm past caring about age. I did worry when I was about to turn 30, I worried about turning 30. So I asked a few friends who were also approaching their 30th birthday how they thought it was gonna affect them. One guy said it means I'm closer to retirement, which I thought was a good positive way of looking at it. But my favorite answer came from a bloke who said, I just need to make it a 34 and I've beaten Jesus at living. <laughs> I was going to say I worry about my weight, but not enough to do anything about it yet. <laughs> Although I did, I bought a cross trainer, but apparently that's not enough. Just to buy it. <laughs> Although to be fair, it's in the spare room, and whenever friends stay over, I have to move it into the hall, and then back again, and I break a sweat, and I think, oh, it's paying for itself. <laughs> I think the problem is just the fact that I eat whatever I like, and I don't give a shit. <laughs> who are very similar to me and you're just <laughs> <laughs> It's probably the, the longest their mouth's been open without some fucking food in it. <laughs> <laughs> exactly the same as me, it's a fucking hobby. <laughs> no, I think because I was in a restaurant with my friend and I said, I like it in here because they've got multicoloured food. And she said, I think you'll find they're called vegetables. <laughs> anymore about the fact that I can't really see me funny. Uh, <laughs> just thought if my funny or all funnies make you feel quite sick, sir. <laughs> Is it my funny in particular? You're just not a big fan of fannies. You're not a fan of fannies. I've got some cock stuff later on, you'll fucking love that. <laughs> say me funny anymore anyway, because I've got people for that now. Uh, what person? People sounds bad, doesn't it? <laughs> well, there's two. It's a job, Shay. <laughs> I can't say me funny because me belly, but I can't say me belly because me tits. Hooray! <laughs> as long as they stay, I'm all right. If they go, I'm fucked. <laughs> well, probably less so. <laughs> but I started buying women's magazines. I quite like women's magazines. And I bought one recently, because on the front cover, it said that some female celebrities had put weight on and that they were now curvaceous. I thought, let's have a look and just see how curvaceous they are. So I fixed her, and the fattest woman in there, it said that she had ballooned. <laughs> I repeat, she had ballooned <laughs> to a size 12. <laughs> a size 12. I give my right arm to be a size 12. My right arm might be a size 12. <laughs> But I've discovered the most terrific way you know you've put weight on. I don't think this is commonly known, so I feel like I should sort of spread the word. This happened to me in January, and it is genuinely upsetting. Where my boyfriend lives is a block of flats, and round the back of the block of flats is a car park. In order to get into the car park, you have to go through like a barrier, like an arm that lifts up when it senses a car is near. <laughs> two big bags of shopping, but it still thought I was a Peugeot 206. <laughs> but a friend of mine, uh, actually, no, I'm not going to call him that. Uh, it's not appropriate. I'm going to call him a male acquaintance. Let's do that. A male acquaintance of mine with whom I have never had a dalliance <laughs> said to me, you know what? If you lost a couple of stone, <laughs> I said, the rest of this better be a fucking equation. <laughs> So 
stone, we could probably go out. I said, only if the couple of stone I lost was me fucking head. But I was on holiday with my boyfriend last year and he lifted me up like in a romantic fashion, you know, and put me down again, obviously, um, in a different place. Otherwise that would just be weird, wouldn't it? <laughs> Guess the way to the lady stall at the fairground. <laughs> Too fucking much. And when he put me back down, because I'd been reading a bit of Jane Austen on holiday, I came over all sort of. <laughs> 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 like I needed a fan. <laughs> and I said, Was I, uh, was I very heavy? And he's supposed to follow the lead and say something along the lines of, Why you weighed no more than a dried leaf. <laughs> well, he didn't, he went, Manageable. <laughs> But I found recently that I'm not very good at relaxing. I'm get, I, I get quite wound up. I'm on the go all the time. I'm a bit of a workaholic, to be honest. And uh, when I get in from, from work, wherever I've been, I'm rubbish at that winding down bit before you go to bed. I'm quite interested now whether people relax. Uh, nice fella in the front. Hello, fella. How do you relax when you get in from wherever you spend your days? Is there something that you always do to help you wind down? You sit down, watch TV. Yeah, you sit down, that's a good start, isn't it? <laughs> Just sit down. Oh, I'm relaxed. And you watch a bit of telly. What time do you normally put the telly on? About six. About six. You see, anything from six on, it's quite good for a few hours, isn't it? Quite yeah. good telly then. When I get in from work, it can be anything from midnight to four in the morning. So unless I've remembered to record something, I'm stuck with fucking Babe Station. <laughs> babe Station. If you don't know what Babe Station is, it's a soft porn channel where on the screen is a relatively uneducated lady. <laughs> I'm guessing. And, uh, and she's, she's on the phone, uh, and across the bottom of the screen is a telephone number that you can ring, presumably to talk to her for sexual reasons. Although I don't think there are any rules that say you can't ring her up and chuck her a couple of sums and see how she gets on. <laughs> I'd probably just give her careers advice, because I used to work for the job centre. We like, are very good on the phones. You could work for Orange days to people ringing up and moaning. <laughs> So we've got a bit of telly watching from the fella at the front. Thank you very much. What about nice fella there in the nice blue shirt? What, what would you do to relax? Take the dog for a walk. You take the dog for a walk. So is it the exercise or the fresh air or a combination of the two? Fresh air in London, yeah. It's fresh air in London. Oh, yes, I forgot. Do you have, have to wear a little mask, do you? <laughs> no. Do you just go under a certain level and then you're all right? What time do you go walking with a dog? Is it tea time? Uh, four o'clock. Tea time. Three o'clock. It's the specifics aren't that important. Enough. <laughs> we'll come back to me in a minute. Don't worry. Uh, three o'clock, and so that's afternoon. Because I, because I used to go like years ago. I used to go running. I know. Fuck off. It's hard to believe. Uh, <laughs> didn't last very long. But I used to go. Well, I used to go running around the park, but really early on, because there's a time. There's a window that you can go, because it has to be before everybody gets up to go to work, because they're the people that point and laugh. But after the dog walkers, because they're always the ones that find the bodies, aren't they? <laughs> it is, isn't it? It's always that. It's always... Oh, found by a dog walker. <laughs> Thank fuck I went out after them. <laughs> so we've got a bit of walking the dog. What else do we do to relax? Let's have people shouting out. Self-gratification. <clears throat> <laughs> okay, do you just tell yourself you're brilliant or do you have a wank? <laughs> I did a show in Birmingham and I asked a man there how he relaxed when he got in from work and he said one word. The beginning of the word sounded really happy and midway through the word it just changed and sounded desperately sad. I said, how do you relax when you get in from work? And he went, masturbation. <laughs> I don't find that very relaxing. Uh, am I sharing too much? Uh, I don't find masturbation very relaxing because I'm a bugger for multitasking. <laughs> I've been known to put my tash cream on and go, I've got five minutes, I'll have a quick. <laughs> you make sure you don't mix your hands up, though. <laughs> and you know what, you get it done on time, because if you don't, you can smell burning flesh. <laughs> and some people are genuinely appalled by that. And other people are going, that's a really good idea. <laughs> <laughs> How else do you like shout out different ways? <laughs> well, it was a non-specific amount as well. <laughs> Wine. <laughs> I had a 
don't really drink very much. Anybody a bit like me doesn't really drink? Yes. Oh, this sounds so sad. <laughs> We're going to drive these fuckers home tonight. <laughs> Are we big drinkers, too? If you do like a drink, then? Yay! See, I'm not, I'm not a very good drinker. I've had some quite bad experiences. I once went out with a friend of mine. She's lovely, but her husband's a little bit iffy. And... Uh, yeah, went out for a few drinks and the next day I was really ill and I rang her and I said, I've got no idea why I'm this ill. We'd only had like two glasses of wine. And she said, oh, that'll be Dave. He will have spiked your drink. <laughs> I said, really? She said, oh, yeah. He spiked mine once with speed, but I didn't mind so much because I got loads of hoovering done. <laughs> so we've got telly, we've got drink, and how else do you relax? Who the fuck are you? Where are you? <laughs> Knitting. You're from Borden. Hello. It means nothing to them, but hello. <laughs> oh, okay. <laughs> so you knit. Uh, do you just knit like a big long? I imagine it's just always scarves. Or do you knit actual things that you can force onto people as presents? <laughs> <laughs> Cocks. She's talking about cocks again. <laughs> so knitting is a good answer. My friend said to me, have a bath. She said, have a bath. It's quite a good way of relaxing. I thought, oh, it's quite a good idea. Because I normally have showers. I think showers are more sort of time efficient. But I still buy all the things you're supposed to put in the bath. You know, the lotions and the potions and the bath bombs, all that sort of stuff. My bathroom looks like I've ram raided lush. <laughs> the only time I ever have a bath is when I'm in, I'm in a hotel, I'm on the road maybe, and I'm in a hotel room, I've got a bit of time to myself. But of course, I don't take my lotions and my potions because you don't, do you? Instead, I'm stuck with time, but like an inch of shower gel <laughs> slash shampoo slash fucking toothpaste. <laughs> with which I'm expected to wash a 12-stone woman. <laughs> I mean, me. <laughs> I don't provide a service. Come on in, Brenda, get on the scales. <laughs> You're all right, go get your clothes off. <laughs> so my friends said I have a bath, so I had a bath, and it was all right. It's all right. But I thought, I bet I can make this better. So I had a cup of tea in the bath. <gasps> Fine about being the same temperature on the inside as the outside. <laughs> I was in the bath the other day, I had a cup of tea on the go, had a bath bomb in. We all know what a bath bomb is, it just fizzes around and makes the water all smell nice and feel nice. And my boyfriend was walking past the bathroom door and I shouted him in and he said, what's the matter? And I said, doesn't it smell nice? And he went, oh, it does smell nice. And I said, feel my arm and I lifted it out of the water and I went, feel that. And he went, ooh, <laughs> slimy. <laughs> So I relaxed for about another 20 minutes and then it was time to get out of the bath. But I still had a little bit of tea left and I thought, I'm not going anywhere till I finish my tea. So I just pulled the plug and let the water all drain out. And I ended up sitting in an empty bath. <laughs> I felt a little bit beached. <laughs> but it wasn't altogether a horrible experience. Nobody was like spraying us with water trying to keep us alive. <laughs> so I finished my tea and as I stood up to get out of the bath, a tidal wave of water came from behind me. <laughs> I looked at the front and it was empty. I looked behind, still about that much. I'd formed a seal around the bath with me arse. <laughs> that wasn't very relaxing. But I do sometimes struggle with sleeping as well. Just occasionally I have the odd bout of insomnia and I thought maybe I'll buy a CD and get these CDs, can't you, that have got soothing sounds and music on. I thought maybe I'll get one of those that might help us drift off to sleep. I noticed Paul McKenna has got a CD out, hasn't he? I can make you sleep. He's a very confident man, Paul McKenna, isn't he? It's not, I'll give it a bash. <laughs> I can make you sleep. He's also got I can make you thin, which I had thought about getting because it sounded like a challenge uh, for him. I can make you thin. Can you, can you, Paul? <laughs> Bring it on, motherfucker. <laughs> but he's also got, I can make you rich, and I thought, I wonder if that's his happiness box set. Thin, rich, sleep, done. <laughs> when I first started going out with my boyfriend, I was living in a flat where the boiler was broken and it was freezing, and he sent me a text, and the text said, if I was there, I would make you warm, I would make you come, and I would make you breakfast. And I thought, now that's a fucking box set, isn't it? <laughs> 
I'm not suggesting that that should be Paul McKenna's next box set. <laughs> I can make you come. Can you, can you, Paul? <laughs> oh, fuck okay, it, just did. He's good, he's good. I thought I was giving up smoking. <laughs> I do a lot of driving in this job. I don't, mm, I don't find driving very relaxing. Uh, I get quite stressed behind the wheel. And I bought something recently that I thought might help in certain situations. And what I bought was a she-wee. Now, <laughs> some of you know what it is. If you don't know what a she-wee is, it's a little plastic funnel that ladies can use in order to have a wee standing up without having to move any clothing. It's quite practical, quite functional. Women use it for music festivals, or for going walk and a hike and that sort of thing. I bought it because I got stuck in traffic. I wasn't just like at the lights for ages going, come on, come on, fuck it, I'm just gonna piss myself. <laughs> now, I was driving on the M6 between Manchester and Birmingham and a lorry jackknifed, and there's 150 cars stuck for two and a half hours. And all of the men were getting out of their cars, they all had a bit of a chat with each other, and then they stood in a big long line on the hard shoulder and had a wee, and I was really jealous. <laughs> so I got in, ordered a she wee, it arrived, it's pink, obviously. And I also bought an extension pipe. <laughs> so I thought if that ever happens again and I get to wee alongside the men on the hard shoulder, wouldn't it be great if I had the biggest cock? <laughs> Is that all you've got, love? <laughs> Has anybody got a shoulder I can rest mine on? <laughs> but I'm quite practical like that. I, like, I've only been driving a few years, uh, but when I first passed my test, my dad, who I get my practical side from, said to me, right, the following things you should always have in the boot of your car. You need a blanket, you need a flask, you need a shovel. <laughs> and he's right, because whenever I've killed a man, I'm always parched. <laughs> but I am quite practical, I'm quite logical. In some ways, I've got quite a male brain, and then in other ways, I'm quite girly and quite feminine, quite emotional. I think. To be honest, I think I'm a bit of a mishmash of the genders. Uh, I mean, like, in a personality way. I don't mean, like, I've got a bit of a novel I can't explain. <laughs> Does yours look like that? <laughs> My friend invited me around for tea. She said, come round to mine, I'm going to cook all your favourite food. I said, what a lovely thing to do for somebody. So, of course, I went. A Couple of hours later, I was sitting on the sofa, putting the world to rights, and she blurted out, just out of nowhere, she blurted out, I don't think my lady parts look like other girls' lady parts. <laughs> what the fuck am I supposed to do with that? I realised the whole night had been a ploy. <laughs> Favourite foods by us. Come and look at me, Fanny. <laughs> I said, I'm not looking at it. I'm not looking at it. But if you're drawing on a bit of paper, <laughs> I'll have a look at that. So she drew it on a bit of paper, and I drew mine as well, and we compared them. And they were very similar, so she was much happier. She said mine was tidier. I don't really know what that means. But I know I definitely don't want to look at hers now that I know that it's messy. <laughs> but it could have been worse than drawing in a bit of paper. I could have just put some paint on and done a potato print. <laughs> Sometimes we wouldn't even need the paint. Oh! <laughs> oh. <laughs> But what I've been doing with audiences is asking the ladies what's the best thing about being a woman and the men what's the best thing about being a man and then working out whether I'm more male or more female depending on you guys tonight. And obviously it changes every night and it's fun for you but it's ever so slightly terrifying for me. So let's get cracking on that. I'm going to write them down because I've got such an awful memory. Let's get some ladies shouting out. What do we think is the best thing about... Nice. Fucking hell. <laughs> Always being right. Where are you, love? Where's oh, there you are. Hello. Always being right. Wow. Are you in a relationship at the minute? <laughs> you are? Is your partner with you tonight? Are you all right, love? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Always being right is a good answer. And we need a couple more from the ladies. Best thing about being a woman? Free dinners. Free dinners? <laughs> Where are you? Free dinners. Okay. <laughs> Who pays for the actual dinners? Who does? The fella. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> They're not really free, the other love.
<laughs> that pizza's worth it. Oh. <laughs> Wow. And uh, one more for the ladies. Best thing about being a woman? Nothing. Nothing? Aww. Did you just shout out nothing? <laughs> Nobody's ever said that before. <laughs> what, why don't you like being a Are you like, like, are you due a big operation soon or? <laughs> I'm done. I've had enough. <laughs> I'm going to get a cock. <laughs> Would you rather be a man? Maybe. Oh, you're not really sure? <laughs> so you're not. Okay, I'm just going to put indecisive down for you. <laughs> Maybe that fella will buy you a dinner. <laughs> then you would change your mind. <laughs> wow, shallow as well. <laughs> Let's get some ladies shouting out. What do you think the best thing is about being a woman? Tits. <laughs> <laughs> Hello, lady. Tits. <laughs> How long have you had them? Quite a while. I got mine when I left school. I, d I mean, that, that's when they grew. I don't mean like, you've done quite well in your JCSAs. <laughs> Have some tits. <laughs> tits is a good answer. Thank you very much, lady. And there was another lady shouted out, but I didn't. Are you upstairs or downstairs? The lady who shouted out something. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. hello, love. I said that we're better at everything. We're better at everything. <laughs> <laughs> I love that one woman went, yeah, and the rest of you went, oh, fuck. <laughs> gonna kick off now. <laughs> Better at everything. Everything. Okay. Uh, do any of the fellas want to shout out something that they think they may be better than that lady at? <laughs> hey, pissing through letterboxes. <laughs> pissing through letterboxes. We've got shewees. We can fucking do that now. <laughs> Maybe you are right, lady. Well done. And we need one more from the ladies. Best thing about being a woman? Being psychic. Being psychic. <laughs> OK, are you trained? <laughs> no. Are you in a relationship at the moment? Yes. Is this? Oh, it's, oh lovely, lovely, hello, lovely lady. Tell me, is your lovely lady psychic? No, she's not, is she? It's because it's not real, is it? <laughs> The reason she's not is because it's not possible. <laughs> uh, what do you think I'm thinking now about you? <laughs> that you've what? You've got nice glasses. Uh, well, okay. <laughs> Let's go with that to make her feel better about herself. <laughs> that I've got nice glasses. That's brilliant. You know, that you're a loon is what I was thinking. But... <laughs> Whatever. OK, let's get some fellas. Uh, nice fella here. You're quite young. How old are you? I'm 23. 23. What do you think is the best thing about being a man, love? Um, Saturday football. Saturday football. Do you play football or is it watching? Watching. Watching. Is it going to kick off if you see who you support? Will it kick off? No, it should be, it should be right. Should be right. Are we ready? <laughs> who do you support, love? I'm an Arsenal fan. <laughs> <laughs> I've had this answer before when I said to this fella, he said football, and I said, will it kick off? And he said, uh, oh, I don't know, and it was really exciting, and the whole room was dead tense, and it was in Liverpool, the sort of place where it might well divide opinion. And he went, Hull, and everybody in the room went, who? <laughs> Watching football is a good answer. Thank you very much, love. Let's get some more fellas. The, the fella who shouted out about uh, pissing through letterboxes, is that your answer? Yeah, that's it. Nothing else. Nothing else. <laughs> the best thing about being a man, that's it, done. <laughs> Pissing through letterboxes. <laughs> I've got a shiwi now. I'm definitely going to have a go at that. Uh, <laughs> it was a, a bloke said uh, the best thing about being a man was peeing standing up. And I said to him, oh, where's the weirdest place you've had a wee? And I was doing this, and he went, uh, in a water bottle on a stage once. <laughs> <laughs> Very thirsty, it'll be champion. <laughs> so thank you very much, fella. Let's get some more fellas shout now. Best thing about being a bloke? Yeah. <laughs> is that you there, fella? What did you, oh somebody say not being was it you? Not being a woman. What do you think you'd hate about being a woman? 
not being able to weigh at the side of the road. <laughs> yes, you just take things that have been said before and pass them off as your own love. <laughs> what would you hate about being a woman? Not being right. <laughs> Quite a nice answer to like a rally, hasn't it? <laughs> Bless him. She's yeah. She's she's just doing that. I'm sorry, face. I'm sorry, I have this all the time. He's a dick. I cannot help it. <laughs> well done, lady, for putting up with that shite. <laughs> You've taken him off the streets, so we don't have to go out with him. Well done. <laughs> we had another fella shout out, but I didn't quite hear it. That's the best thing about being a man. <laughs> One at a time. <laughs> it's like, do you want that whole pack of biscuits? I'm happy with one biscuit. <laughs> I'll come back to you in about half an hour and I'll try for another biscuit. <laughs> His wife's gone, ah, ah, ah. <laughs> it's fine, I can feed myself, love. parallel between orgasms and biscuits, but I like it. <laughs> Thank you very much. Let's get some fellas shout now. Best thing about being a bloke? Not having a vagina. Not having a vagina. <laughs> <laughs> I think some of the men are disagreeing with you. <laughs> which is quite an odd turn of events. Not having a vagina. I feel you're so against vaginas, sir. I feel like, you know... Somebody should rub one in your face before the end of the show. <laughs> it's not going to be me, fuck off. I've got knickers on that go up to me bra, it would take too long. <laughs> when was the last time you saw one? <laughs> like on the way out, yeah. <laughs> was it on the way out? <laughs> Maybe for about 14. That was when you were born? No. <laughs> that was when you last looked at one. Okay. I have seen them on TV. You've seen them on TV. <laughs> as far as I'm aware, you have to sort of seek them out on telly, don't you? <laughs> I don't think it just pops up in the middle of, like, Crime Watch. <laughs> Maybe it does. You've seen them on TV, and is your reaction much like whenever I do a joke about vaginas and you do that, oh, <laughs> is it the same then? <laughs> well, do the noise that you do whenever you see a cock? It, rather than a noise like a <gasps> like that like when I see a big cake and nobody around <laughs> not having a vagina thank you very much let's get two more fellas shouting out best thing about being a bloke reverse parking who, who said that oh. <laughs> like three men clapping reverse parking reverse parking let's test them should we test them there's a lady in the front. Yes, test him. <laughs> Reverse park. And how long have you been driving, love? Uh, about 30 years. 30 years. It was easier then, though, wasn't it? It was like horses and carts and that. <laughs> <laughs> and can you... Let's test him. Uh, can, you, can you reverse, like, in first time? Mostly, yes. Mostly. Oh, at least he's honest. Mostly. Uh, and can you, uh, let's have a think, what else? Can you, can you reverse round a corner? Yes. Fuck. <laughs> have you got any points on your licence? No. Yes, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Relationships stand for fuck all when it's men against women, have you noticed? Yes, he has. Well, rushing to help an old lady. <laughs> While you are rushing to help the old lady, you could have killed a friend. <laughs> that would have been funny. Well, <laughs> in hindsight. Maybe it's not at the time. Thank you very much for answering. First thing about being a bloke? No periods. No periods. Oh. <laughs> well, the women all hate you. <laughs> That's a good answer. Thank you. Let's get some more fellas shouting out. Best thing about being a bloke? 
Having a beard. <laughs> Having a, uh, is that laziness or do you like the way it looks? Feels. Feels. You like the way it feels? Do you just sit at home and just... <laughs> oh. Oh. Okay, I do this when I'm driving. And so, you know, people pick their nose when there are traffic lights. I do what I call feeling for beard. So I do that. <laughs> Fuck, I've got one, I've got one. <laughs> Let's get some more fellas shouting out. Best thing about being a bloke? Grinder. Grinder. Oh, there was one clap. You might have found a mate. <laughs> Do you want to explain to those who don't know what Grinder is? <laughs> <laughs> is that an app yeah. where you can find a gay man? Is that right? Yeah. Excellent. OK. It's good that there was one other clap, though, isn't it? <laughs> I feel like he might have found somebody tonight. <laughs> but chances are you probably already knew where he was and had sussed about and decided you didn't fucking like him. <laughs> we've, got, we've got more for the blokes. We need another one from the ladies. Best thing about being a woman? Multiple orgasms. Multiple orgasms. <laughs> <laughs> it's a small pocket of women are clapping and, and some of the men are going, what? <laughs> Do you mean like Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday? <laughs> January, February, March. 2009, 2010. Multiple orgasms. Oh, you talk now. Let's work out whether I'm more male or more female. This is ever so slightly terrifying. Uh, always being right. I don't think that applies to me. Free dinners. Fuck no, I've got self-respect. I'm with you all the way, love, so I'm going to tick tits. <laughs> Sounds good, I like that. Tick tits. <laughs> I don't think we're better at everything. Not having a vagina, well, I do, so I can't tick that one. And reverse parking. Sometimes I get it in first time, and I'm genuinely surprised when that happens. <laughs> Nobody more surprised than me. I just pull in and go, oh, it worked. <laughs> so I can't tick that one. And I, I can't tick no periods. I clearly can't. I don't mean clearly. Oh. Uh, <laughs> I mean, I have periods, but it's not, is it? No. <laughs> if I walk ahead, will you check the back of my skirt? <laughs> <laughs> and yeah, what of a lower cousins. <laughs> Tick. Uh, I can now piss through a letterbox. Awesome. <laughs> Watching football, I'm not really interested in football, so that doesn't apply to me. And Grinder wouldn't really help me an awful lot, I don't think. <laughs> a beard, I'm going to take that as well. If I, it's like a part time job, keeping on top of mine. <laughs> You're laughing, but it's my life. <laughs> so I am one, two parts woman and. Oh, no! Two parts man. <laughs> I feel like I should show you at least a bollock. <laughs> I tell you my favourite answers, uh, my favourite girl answer, she wasn't even a woman, she was a girl, she was 16. And she said, the best thing about being a woman, she said, we can look at boobs whenever we like. It was a good answer. Well, she said, well, you know, men have to earn the right to look at your boobs. <laughs> I thought she seemed awfully young to know about such things. I said, give us an example of something a man would have to do to earn the right to look at your boobs. And she quite simply said, they have to be nice. <laughs> And it was a lovely moment, but loads of the women in the room went, oh my God, she's right. <laughs> We've been showing our boobs to bad men for years. <laughs> my favorite male answer is a man said, the best thing about being a man is dicking things. <laughs> I had to have this explained to me, I didn't know what it was. Dicking things is the act of hitting things with your dick. <laughs> Two days after I met him, <laughs> I met a lovely lady and she said, do you remember the man who said dick and things? And I said, yes. She said, well, he's my fiance. <laughs> I said, did you know about the dick and things? No. <laughs> She said she'd have to go over all the surfaces with a flash wipe. <laughs> I've only been doing stand-up for about six years, and before that, my life was quite substantially different. I was married, and I had a job that I hated so much I used to try and get knocked over on the way in. <laughs> I wasn't so 
suicidal, just a couple of ribs every leg. <laughs> but like I say, my life is, is quite different now. I spent some time with my sister recently and she said, you've changed. Ooh. You know, that voice that they put on, the big sister voice that even though we're 35 and 41 still frightens the shit out of us. <laughs> you've changed. I said, how have I changed? She said, you never used to eat peas when you lived with us. <laughs> That's the kind of crazy lifestyle she thinks I've got now. I always get free peas everywhere I go. <laughs> but obviously, we stay in hotels when you're on the road. You stay in hotels and uh, norm normally quite reasonable ones. Uh, but sometimes I get put in quite posh ones. People put me... I've never, I've never been in a hotel room before that had a B-Day. Has anybody else give us a cheer if you've had a go on a B-Day? Yeah. Where the fuck have I been? <laughs> Has anybody got one at home? Yeah. Shut up. Who's got one at home? <laughs> The knitter. <laughs> You've got two beaters. When, you, are they like side by side so you can, you know, at the same time? Well, we bought the house from some Italians. Oh, well, that explains it all if you bought the house from some Italians. <laughs> well known for their dirty bits. You've got an upstairs beady and a downstairs beady. That's amazing. Maybe you can answer this question then, because I'd never been on a beady before. I know I'm 35. Shut up. I'll have a go. I had a bit of time. Uh, but there aren't any instructions, and I didn't really know how it worked. Maybe you can answer this question. Am I supposed to face the wall? <laughs> no. Is that not right? I didn't know. Is that not right? No. I didn't know. But like I say, I had a bit of time. So I tried it both ways. <laughs> One way was all right. The other way was bloody lovely. <laughs> By the time I'd finished, you could eat your dinner off it. <laughs> Although, of course, I'd have had to go back on then, because it'd be covered in gravy. <laughs> Don't have B-days where I'm from, just have damp flannels. <laughs> but I'm never going to get a B-day. You know, I've got a flat with four rooms. I'm never going to get something that takes up so much space that I'd rarely use. Having said that, I have still got a cooker. <laughs> I'm not very good in the kitchen. I know where it is, because that's where the biscuits are. <laughs> the verb to cook the other day and I rang my boyfriend and I said, I've just ovened a pie. <laughs> but Jamie Oliver's got these 30-minute meals now, hasn't he? 30-minute meals, bless him. He still thinks I've got half an hour to do the tea. 30-minute <laughs> meals, nothing to boast about. I can do a good spaghetti bolognese in four minutes on high. <laughs> in 30 minutes, I expect to have ovened it, eaten it, fucking shut it out by then. <laughs> I, uh, I tend not to see my friends of an evening because I work most nights. So I see my friends, I, we go out for lunch and I really like it. I like going out for lunch with my friends. Went out with one of my friends, she's lovely, but she's a bit of a mourner. Went out for a perfectly nice meal. She complained about the food, so we had to send the food back. And I made some hilarious remark about how the chef's now going to go and wank in a soup. <laughs> she came out with the best answer ever. She just went, oh, good. I haven't had sex in ages. <laughs> Surely she doesn't think that merely ingesting spunk <laughs> is the same as having actual sex. If only it was that straightforward. You know, when you can't really be bothered, just bung it in a smoothie, I'll have it later on. <laughs> Could be one of me five a day. <laughs> but I took me, uh, I took my mum, dad, and my sister out for a nice meal just before Christmas. And midway through the meal, my mum said, uh, when me and your dad go, we're going to go together. I said, what are we talking about now? <laughs> when me and your dad go, we're going to go together. I said, are you talking about a suicide pact? <laughs> and she went, no, we're not going to call it that. <laughs> yeah. So I sort of did the what the fuck face at my sister, the... And she quite calmly just said, as long as they leave me a letter explaining it, because I'm not going to go to prison for them. <laughs> just getting steadily worse. So I looked at my dad, because my dad's like the voice of reason in our family. I looked at my dad and said, what do you think about this? And he went, first I've heard of it. <laughs> he did look genuinely gutted as well. He had massive plans for what he's going to do after my mum had died. <laughs> Thank you.
when I was in Australia, I missed my family terribly, and I used to Skype them uh, once a week. You know this thing of Skype where you can see each other through your computer screens? It makes home feel that little bit closer, I think, if you can see people's faces as well as hear their voices. And they'd sit around their computer, my mum, dad, my sister, in a semicircle once a week, and at the end of every call, they'd lean in and kiss the webcam. <laughs> which was lovely, but terrifying the first time it happened. <laughs> knows about computers, and I know my dad used to work with computers, but I'm pretty sure my mum doesn't really know how it works. I know that she definitely doesn't know that I can still see her face, even when I'm not talking to her. Because <laughs> I'd talk to my mum, then I'd move on to my sister, and I'd go, how's work? And my mum would do this. <laughs> but I used to Skype my boyfriend as well, and I Skyped him every day. And, uh, and I work, you know, away from, I think, that, I mean, there'll be people in this room tonight who work away from home, and I don't think it gets any easier the more you do it. I ended up being in Australia for six weeks, and midway through, I just got quite flat and quite sad, and just really wanted to go home. And on one of those days when I rang my boyfriend, when his face came up on the screen, there was such a well of emotion in here, that the first thing I said to him wasn't hello. The first thing I said was, you're too far away. Aww. So he moved the webcam. <laughs> the heart to tell him I meant geographically. <laughs> he just got the laptop and went like that. <laughs> Is that better, love? <laughs> Bless him. But whenever I spend time with my sister, we always go shopping, because my sister's a really good influence on me. For example, if I buy makeup, I always buy cheap makeup, because if I buy cheap makeup, I can buy more makeup. <laughs> That's how my mind works. My friend said to me the other day, she said, I like that glittery eyeliner you've got on, where did you get that from? I said, just from Asda. She said, really? I said, yeah. I said, it smarts a bit, but it was only four pound. <laughs> and my sister said, why don't we just buy one thing that's good quality, a bit more expensive, and will last. I said, that's a good idea. So I bought a blusher. And you know how makeup all the colours have names these days, don't they? My blusher is called Orgasm. I was like, why does it have to be called orgasm? Why can't it just be fucking peach? I mean, peach. <laughs> <laughs> well, it would be more fun if makeup was a little swearier, though, wouldn't it? I like your nail varnish, thanks very much. It's called shit and red. <laughs> but my sister was determined to embarrass me in front of our parents, and she went, tell Dad what your blush is called. No. <laughs> tell Dad what your blush is called. No. <laughs> I said, look, we're 35 and 41. Are you really going to reduce us to children? <laughs> she went, tell Dad what your blush is called. <laughs> I said, right, shut up, I'll tell him. So I said, Dad, he's going to limber up for this kind of conversation. <laughs> I said, Dad, he went, uh-huh. I went, me blusher. <gasps> <laughs> me blusher's called orgasm. And he thought he'd do a funny joke. And he said, when you put it on, does it make your face do this? And I went, whoa. <laughs> I do. I like going shopping, but I don't find shopping very relaxing. What normally happens is I go in a shop that I like, I try on some clothes that I like, most of them won't fit, and I walk out shouting something along the lines of, oh, so I'm an 18 in here. Well, fuck off. <laughs> and then I have to go and buy a handbag to calm down. Because <laughs> you're never too fat for a handbag. <laughs> They've got those ones that have just got the short straps and they just go right under your arm. And you think it's just a matter of time before I have to get buttered out of a handbag. <laughs> and I know what I'm talking about as well because I was once cut out of a dress in monsoon. <laughs> that wasn't my favourite day. <laughs> the lady said, I'll just go and get the scissors. some new knickers recently. I love it. Whenever I buy knickers, I always buy daft knickers. They've always got, like, cakes or cats or stars or hearts or slogans, that sort of thing. Generally from a supermarket, occasionally from Marks and Spencers, if they've got an offer on. <laughs> oh, three for a tenner. Try and fucking stop us. Uh, 
But one of the supermarkets has recently had a range of superhero knickers. And they're awesome. And I've got enough pairs now that I can be invincible for five days in a row. And I rang my sister because I thought she'll want to know about these. And she said, well, what sort of thing have they got on? And I said, I've got some with Wonder Woman on and some with She-Ra on. And there was a little pause and she went, the footballer. <laughs> She thinks I've got knickers with Alan Shearer's face on. <laughs> but I, I, I love a slogan on a knicker. I love a slogan on a knicker. Um, the best slogan I ever had, it said, I do anything for love and on the back, but I won't do that. <laughs> I mean, it was written on in biro, but still. <laughs> but I went into Marks and Spencer's recently to try some clothes on and... Uh, and the same thing happens, that always happens when you try clothes on in there. The lady took the clothes off us that I wanted to try on, she hung them on the rail, she gave us the tag, she swished the curtain, all very normal so far. But as she swished the curtain, her part and shot, she said, just give us a shout if you need any bigger sizes. <laughs> so I swished it back just as quickly and went, I think you'll find you mean different, you bitch. <laughs> But while I was in Marx's, I went to the lingerie department. In the lingerie department, they had a stretchy, lacy, all-in-one kind of body stock and type of thing. Presumably for sort of sexy time. <laughs> I can't imagine any actual practical use. <laughs> Maybe straining vegetables. <laughs> and on the bottom of the packaging, it said, one size fits most. <laughs> that clearly used to say fits all. You've got to pity the poor woman who had to go in and go, you need to change your packaging, pet. <laughs> it doesn't fit all. <laughs> it's still on one leg. <laughs> but I told you I don't have children. Give us a cheer if you have got kids. Yay. And if you haven't... <laughs> more energy, I like it. <laughs> I don't have children and it's by choice. I just don't really like them. I've never been very maternal, apart from the tiny kittens. <laughs> There's a reason right there, shouldn't have fucking kids. <laughs> I'm sorry, it just popped. <laughs> but I think if you ask any woman who doesn't have kids what would worry them about having kids, the answer would always be childbirth. It's quite a reasonable thing to worry about, isn't it? Because what you're basically doing is you're forcing a person out. That's what you're doing, you're... Forcing a person out. I've never forced a person out. I forced a couple in. <laughs> With a shoehorn. <laughs> no, it was just me, Thumb. I'm not very good with kids. I was never around them as a child. I was always the youngest. My mum had my sister, then she had me, then she had her tubes tied. <laughs> and when she went to the hospital for the appointment, the nurse said, are you sure? And she said, yeah, I've had a chat with my husband. We only wanted two. We've got two. Like, they go ahead with the procedure. And the nurse said, what if one of them dies? <laughs> and my mum was like, it's not like I just want any two. <laughs> well, we've got a set of bunk beds. It seems a shame to waste one. <laughs> But I do have some friends who are mothers, and mothers do a brilliant job, don't get me wrong, but the kind of mothers that I don't like, and they all know one of these, are the kind of mothers who have four or five children and who think that you don't know how to do anything because you don't have kids. It can be the simplest of tasks, you know, the sort of thing, sort of, um, well, I mean, I know how to open a tin of beans because I've got children. <laughs> I don't know how you'd know how to open a tin of beans because you don't have children, do you? No. Aww. Probably open a tin of beans with me funny, but I bet you fucking couldn't. <laughs> with a ring pull as well. <laughs> I say that so you don't think I've got a big jaggedy funny. <laughs> but I was in a shop and this little boy came running over, maybe about five year old, came running over, put his hand in mine and shouted, Mommy! And I thought, ooh, I sometimes forget me keys, but I think I'd remember that. <laughs> And then his dad came over, and I thought, I wonder if this is like the best chat up line ever. And his dad's gonna go, No, no, that's not your mammy. Remember, your mammy left us because my willy's too big. <laughs> I 
but I had to go to family planning just before Christmas. Oh my God. I was the oldest by 20 years. I was mortified. And the lady said, do you want some free condoms while you're here? And I thought, out for out. <laughs> just before Christmas, probably use them as stock and fillers or something. <laughs> and she said, would you like flavoured ones? And I thought, yeah, bugger, this is advanced compared to when I used to go. And I said, look, love, I'm 35. The only flavour I'd want the condom to taste of is cock. <laughs> Apparently they don't do those. <laughs> so I had to settle for our two most popular lines, which were Lambrini and Greg's pasties. <laughs> Told you there'd be some cock ones coming round for your flower. <laughs> Let me ask you guys a question. Shout out anybody in the room who's ever broken anything during sex. <laughs> oh, takes a bit of settling. What, what did, yep, yeah, you broke something? What, where were you? Lamp. A lamp or a lamb? <laughs> where are you, love? Are you, where are you? There you are, hello, love. It was a lamp. What kind of lamp? Ooh, a ceramic base. <laughs> Ooh. And did it just, was it like movement and it just toppled off or? Yeah, pretty much. Pretty much. Did anybody get hurt or was it all right? No, it was all fine. It was all right. So we've got a, a lamp stroke lamb from the lady over there. <laughs> lamp is a good answer. Thank you very much. What else have we got? A bed. A bed. Where are you, love? Hello, flower. Up there. Uh, and you broke the bed. Was it fixable or did you have to buy a new one? You got a new one. OK, there's lots of giggling going on there. Uh, is it, let's have a look, is it the partner that you're with? <laughs> well, I mean, sorry, but if you sit in couples like that, I'm going to make assumptions about your flower. Uh, so it's this lady here, the one that's looking desperately like she wishes she wasn't here. Uh, so did you insist on the new bed? Was it a chance to get a new bed? It was at uni, and it, the landlord said you had to buy a new bed. <laughs> Did he come in and inspect it? <laughs> Did you lose your bond? It's what happens, isn't it, when you fuck a bed to death? <laughs> Somebody's gonna have to go. Was anybody hurt or was it all all right? It was fine. So we've got a bed, thank you very much, couple, who love sitting next to each other so much. Uh, <laughs> we've got, uh, so we've got a bed, and, uh, and we've got a lamp. What else we got? We have a dessert table. A dinner table? Who said a dinner table? A bird table. <laughs> Were you the bird on the table? What did you say? Shout louder. A dessert table. A dessert table? <laughs> All of my tables are dessert tables. <laughs> but are you quite posh? <laughs> well, this is for the bruschetta. Uh, <laughs> then we move over here and we've got, I don't know, sausage mash, I don't know. Uh, I can't even think of a posh main course. Did you say Coco Van? Fucking surprise! For desserts. <laughs> yes. Oh, you worked in a restaurant, <laughs> so you're really not posh. No. <laughs> and was it? Did it have? Why were you having sex at work? <laughs> I like that. There's at least sixty percent of the room going. My sex life is rubbish. <laughs> so was the restaurant still open? Were people like trying to get the jelly and ice cream from round you and that? Under the dessert table. Don't know, I feel like a proper tit now. <laughs> See, if it was me, I'd probably, I'd want to be in, like, writhing in amongst it. <laughs> and then I'd just go, you know what, fella, I don't really need you. Uh, <laughs> oh, creme brulee. <laughs> See, I thought of a posh pudding. Yes. Uh, <laughs> Did you get caught? No. 
Well, now everybody knows because it's on a DVD, isn't it? <laughs> right. I think I used to work in Nando's with her. <laughs> Dessert table is a good answer. Thank you very much, love. Uh, what else we got? It was a what? A rear view mirror. A rear view mirror. <laughs> okay, there's lots of questions here. Um, hello, by the way. Uh, was the car moving? <laughs> no. Okay, that's that's safety first. Got to get that out of the way. Was it knocked off with an arse by any chance? <laughs> you think so? <laughs> Did you not notice till you were trying to drive away? <laughs> Right. No, it's not the spunk in me hair. It's um... <laughs> that's normal. It's Tuesdays. Uh, can't seem to see behind me. <laughs> You've still got it in the cleft of your ass, love. Uh... <laughs> now, does that, did it shear off or just unclip? Because can, you can slot them back in, can't you? Apparently, shut up. <laughs> did it? It was quite an old car. And it's, oh, yeah, classy, aren't you? <laughs> Having sex in an old car. <laughs> well done. Was it through the day? No. No, uh, no obviously. I look there, you're like, what do you think? I am some kind of monster. <laughs> I don't know anybody else. You know how everybody talks about dogging and everything? And I, I don't know anybody who does it. Maybe I do. But every time I see two cars together, I just go, dogging. <laughs> It could, one of them sometimes is an RAC van. <laughs> Dogging. <laughs> no, they're not. So a rear view mirror is a very good answer. Thank you, Flower. Have we got anybody else? Blood vessels. <laughs> We've gone all the way from lamp to blood vessels. Uh, uh, <laughs> where were the blood vessels? You thought he was dribbling on you? <laughs> we need to know the rest, otherwise I'll not sleep. <laughs> Just put your fingers in your ears if you're already feeling a bit sick. <laughs> We've all, did you just say, you've all been there? <laughs> Too much dribble, it's a telltale sign, pet. and he looked like a butcher's slab. You looked like a butcher's slab. He was champion. <laughs> he was ready for the next goal. So, it, yes, it would be a passion killer. If it wasn't a passion killer, there's something wrong with you. <laughs> so you didn't actually work out where the blood came from? It was, oh, it was his nose. Oh, that's, it could have been a lot worse, because probably the most painful one I've had so far, a man said he'd broken his banjo string. Oh. It's about cocks, you should like this one. <laughs> Slapping them and that. No. Uh, if you don't know what a banjo string is, uh, you should just Google it when you get in. <laughs> I'm not going to tell you, I'm not your mum. Uh, oh, if it <laughs> shouldn't be your mum that ever tells you that. <laughs> now, things you need to know, what can snap on a cock? when you say banjo string, though, and, and a lot of the people in the room know what it is, and other people are going, why was he playing a banjo? <laughs> I don't get it. Doesn't sound very sexy to me. It's not a sexy instrument. Thank you very much for that, Flower. God, I hope everybody's all right now. Jesus Christ. Uh, there was a man, actually, I did a, a show, and a man shouted out that he'd broken his foot during sex, and I said, did you carry on, or did you stop? And he said, carried on. <laughs> and I recognised his accent, he was a Geordie, and I thought he probably didn't even put his fucking pie down. <laughs> but I know it's a very personal question, and I'm grateful to those of you who did join in, thank you very much. What sometimes happens is people go, I'm not going to tell her in front of all those people, but I'll send her an email when I get in. <laughs> and I'm like, oh, I've got an email, oh, oh. <laughs> Although I have got a man who, uh, a man who sorts my website out, so he actually filters my emails. Mainly because I'm not very technical, but also, because for a while I was getting loads of pictures of men's cocks just sent to me. And now he can print them off so I can put them on the wall. <laughs> just as a border, it's not too much. Would you like to sleep in the cock room this evening? <laughs> well, probably my, the, probably the best one that I've ever had by email, a lady said she'd broken a man's pelvis. 
Yeah. It was a one-night stand. She was on top. He was screaming. She thought he was having a marvellous time. <laughs> but my favourite one in a, in, a, in a show, lady said she'd broken a man's spirit. <laughs> I think we've all done that from time to time. <laughs> I brought my vibrator once. That counts, right? Um, and normally when I break things, I give them to me dad to fix. <laughs> Can I do that? So I just watch it off the bedside cabinet and I got it going again. It's not really a joke, that one. It's just a tip for the ladies. <laughs> but I told you I live on my own. My boyfriend also lives on his own. I think some people think that's quite odd that we've been together a few years and we don't live together. But we sort of feel like we've got the best of both worlds because we have a few days a week together and a few days a week apart. And it's sort of ideal. There was a time that he moved in with me for three months because he was between flats and it made sense. And I was fine with it, because there was an end date. I'm a bit stuck in my ways. I love you, but bye. <laughs> and while he was at mine, for those three months, I worked away for a week. And when I came back, uh, some things had changed in my flat. <laughs> and I said, uh, love, um, uh, one of the towels smells of bums. <laughs> He just went, that'll be me bum towel. <laughs> so when he did eventually move out as a housewarming present, I brought him a small brown hand towel. <laughs> it's good because it's brown, he doesn't have to wash it and just crack it and use it again. <laughs> oh. But his mum came out of his flat, his mum's lovely, she came out of his flat and she said, uh, got you a new duvet set. He said, I don't need a new duvet set. She said, you've got one that you just wash and put back on. This way you'll have a change. And he said, that's lovely. Thank you very much. So she went to put it on and it was lovely. It was all patterned, sort of matching. It was really nice. It was a little bit flowery for him. Just a little bit flowery for him. And he went in to have a look and he didn't want to hurt her feelings. He came back out and he went, she's made me bed gay. <laughs> I said, no, love, just because it doesn't got spunk in dinner and it doesn't make it gay. <laughs> Clean, that's the word you're looking for. <laughs> it's clean. And his mum had overheard and she came in and she said, it's not a gay bed. If it was a gay bed, there'd be shackles. <laughs> but DVDs, has she been fucking watching? <sighs> but he is a lovely man, he's lovely. We were in bed the other day and he got quite animated. And, uh, and he shouted out, feel how hard that is. And I thought, you bugger, it's Tuesday. We didn't have this booked in. <laughs> Turns out he's talking about the skin on his feet. <laughs> I thought about taking him to one of those places. You know those places that are popping up all over the place where uh, it's got a tank with the fish in and you put your feet in and the fish nibble at the hard skin. You know those places. And I thought about taking him to one of those and I thought, I can't do that. The poor little fish, they'll think he's got fucking shoes on. <laughs> going to take him to a blacksmith instead. <laughs> but he's lovely. He's the nicest person I've ever met. He's a genuinely good man. And in January this year, I said to him, you know what? I think it's about time we started talking about the future. And that's what I expected from him, like an awkward silence. <laughs> Maybe some footsteps as he walked the fuck out of my life. <laughs> but he didn't. He just smiled. Just really like a beam and grin. And I was, I was really touched. And I thought, oh my God, he wants to spend his future with me. Yay. And he said, are you sure you're all right talking about the future? And he went, what, like flying cars and that? <laughs> but I've, I've never cheated on a boyfriend and I never would, but I think I found the acceptable face of adultery. I was sitting on a train on the aisle seat and a blind man got on, and he was using the tops of the chairs as sort of leverage to get along the carriage, understandably. And at one point, the train wobbled, and he lost his balance. And he put one hand firmly on me boob. <laughs> and I let him. <laughs> <laughs> I even crossed over for when he came back from the loo. <laughs> but we've started sort of spicing things up in the bedroom. There's different ways you can do this, as I'm sure you know. Uh, the first way you can do is you can have a shower. A nice couple lay at the front. Have you ever had a shower together? There's, oh, he thinks you might and she doesn't. Because <laughs> oh, I said to my, the first thing I said to my fella, I said, you know what? He was going in the shower and I said, maybe he'd like some company. And he said, 
Just give us five minutes till I've washed my arse. <laughs> shower always starts off really well and then halfway through I realise this is just cleaning now isn't it? There's <laughs> nothing sexy going on anymore. It's when he says the words arms up. <laughs> but he is very thorough. <laughs> Other things you can do, you can get dressed up as well. Got a nice couple in, in the middle of here. Have you ever dressed up? Fella, have you ever dressed up like in an outfit? Or, no you haven't. How, are you, how old are you guys? 38. 38. You see, because I still a couple much older than you guys, so late 60s, early 70s. And you can always tell when a couple have been together too long. They had that sort of empty, sad, <laughs> hollow expression. And what happens is, you can, the way you can tell is, when you ask them how long they've been together, and uh, before they do an, a number, they always do a little horse impression. So you go, how long have you two been together? And they go... <laughs> 30 years, 40 years, fuck knows. <laughs> so I asked the old man, I said, have you ever dressed up like in an outfit or a uniform for sex? And he went, no. So I looked at his, his good lady and I said, is there anything you'd like him to wear in bed? And she went, a shroud. <laughs> but I also like, asked a, a young lad, much younger than you, sort of 16 or 17, I shouldn't have been talking to a 16-year-old boy about sex. But I just thought it would give us something to rub me button to later on. Um, <laughs> does everybody know? No, but people know what that is, don't they? Just, some people have different names for it. My, uh, my friend said, what's rubbing your button? And I had to do a little action. And she said, oh, you mean checking your lettuce? <laughs> I don't know what that is. But this young lad, 16-year-old, of course he'd never dressed up for sex. Just having sex is excellent. But I asked him if he was going to get dressed up, what would he dress up as? And he went... Fireman, fireman. Oh, oh, Spider-Man, Spider-Man. <laughs> Although we're not talking about sex anymore, it's just pyjamas. <laughs> I was going to say that I've dressed up, but I haven't really, it's slightly different. I was once on top, and he tried to put a sock on one of my boobs. <laughs> it's not the same thing, is it? No girl ever wants to hear that her boobs are lovely and long. <laughs> Well, and I wasn't sure whether to be pleased or not. <laughs> Other things you can do. Uh, you can use food. Let's get what about fella on the end. What kind of food do you think you could use in sex? Ice cream. Ice cream's a good answer. What about nice fella and a nice chicky shirt? What kind of food do you think? Chocolate. chocolate. <laughs> Somebody shout cucumber. <laughs> Ice cream and chocolate. And what about uh, what about nice fella here? What kind of food do you think to use in sex? Absolutely no idea. Absolutely no idea. Oh, look at his wife's face. <laughs> to be honest, she looks quite happy, like they haven't even needed that. <laughs> we haven't got to that stage that you're at with your boyfriend of five years. Fuck off. <laughs> I, know, I like asking fellas, because fellas come up with a wide variety of interesting answers. I've stopped asking ladies, no offence to the ladies, but ladies always say chocolate. Chocolate sauce, chocolate cream, fuck it, I'll put a Twix up there, whatever. <laughs> As long as I can have a chocolate bag afterwards. <laughs> but I asked, uh, I asked a man recently what kind of food he had used in sex, and he said noodles. <laughs> and I've had a bloke say chips and a bloke say curry, and I think generally men are picking things so they're probably going to have for their tea anyway. <laughs> Just using their partners as plates. <laughs> but I asked an old man, couldn't resist an old man in his 80s, I said, what kind of food do you think would be good to use? And he said, ice cream, and ice cream's a good sort of classic answer. But it wasn't so much the answer he gave as the noise that he made while he was thinking. Because he went like this. <laughs> what was he thinking while he did that noise? What goes well with vagina? <laughs> I scream. <laughs> My favourite answer was a guy just said cream. He said cream, but he went like that, like squirty. And I thought, well, obviously, you're not just going to spoon it at her. <laughs> but she catches it in all the right places. <laughs> Then he went like this. He went, pack her full. Oh. <laughs> I'm so glad that you're as horrified as I was. <laughs> pack her full. <laughs> to be fair, he was a plasterer. <laughs> Just smooth that over. <laughs> Not get any more bother from that crack. But the last thing you can do is you can do dirty talk on you. We thought we'd give it a go. We'd never done it to previous partners. We thought we'd give it a go. And I said, well, I'll start off, you know, because I'm, you know, an independent woman. 
I didn't do that. That'd be a really weird way of starting off, wouldn't it? <laughs> I'm ready. <laughs> and I didn't know what you're supposed to say, and I just sort of went, ooh, uh, <sighs> um, I've been a bad girl. I'm sorry about that. <laughs> and he just went, apology accepted. <laughs> But recently I've had a bit more practice and he started off and he went, you've been such a bad girl. <laughs> but I think I'm going to have to punch you. <laughs> He's gone too far there, hasn't he? But I misheard me and said punch, he said punish, which apparently entirely acceptable in terms of sexy lingo. But he hadn't really thought it through, because I said, what kind of punishment did he have in mind? He said, do the dishes! <laughs> but we're clearly not married. Give us a cheer if you are married. Please. And if you're not? <laughs> More energy again. <laughs> have we got any divorces in? Yeah. Yeah. Fucking the happiest of all being there done that fucked it off. Now I'm divorced, and when I got divorced, it came as, it came as quite a surprise to me. Um, probably, no, surprise is probably the wrong word, isn't it? Shock's probably a better word. Surprise just sounds like he burst out of a big cake. <laughs> it would have been better had he done that, because at least then there would have been fucking cake. <laughs> but for a while after getting divorced, I, w I found I wasn't invited to quite as many weddings, and I think people thought I was going to walk in like the bit of divorcee and go, huh, huh. <laughs> you enjoy your fucking day. <laughs> See how long this bastard lasts. <laughs> but I've recently been invited to more weddings and I went to one a few months ago and it was lovely. And instead of having a wedding cake, they had a spiral cake stand that had cupcakes all the way around and a massive cupcake on the top that I sort of had my eye on. <laughs> <laughs> but I suspected maybe one of the wedding party had claimed that as well. But the groom came over to me and he said, thanks for the recommendation, because I'd recommended the cupcake shop. That's a scary day when you realise you've just recommended a cupcake shop and you don't even live in that fucking town. <laughs> and he said, thanks for the recommendation. I know you want a cake. What we're going to do, the band's going to come in in a minute. The band's going to do two sections. In their break, that's when we're going to do cake stuff. I said, brilliant. So pretty much every time the band looked like they were coming to the end of a song, I just stood up. <laughs> and when I was eventually right, I went over to the cake stand. I picked a cake. My boyfriend was behind me. He did the same. My friend, my friend's wife, four of us, picked our cakes, went back to our seats, smug as fuck that we'd missed the queue. Mm, mm, mm. <laughs> Glanced across, expecting to see a long line of people. The only people that were there were the bride and groom having their photos taken at the cake stand. <laughs> The groom came over later on and I said, I'm really sorry, but I think we might have jumped the gun on the cakes. And he said, don't worry, when I put the photos up on Facebook, I'm going to tag every gap with your fucking name. <laughs> <laughs> but me and my fella try and be romantic to each other whenever we feel like it. Uh, sometimes we celebrate Valentine's Day, sometimes we don't. We didn't this year, we did last year. Last year, a few days before Valentine's Day, he said to me, I could do with some suggestions sort of on the present front. And I said, that's fine, because I know some women like a surprise, but I'm quite happy to know what it is, because I'm really busy and I don't have time to take the bugger back. <laughs> so I said to him, I said, there's a shop called Accessorize that I love. I said, you could pretty much get anything in there and you'd be on safe ground. I described the kind of thing that I like. I said, it's relatively inexpensive costume jewelry, sort of this sort of thing, sort of beads and little flowery earrings, sort of quite plasticky, quite girly you know, quite cheap, nothing that looks like actual jewellery. And he said, fine, logged. I do love him, but that's what he's like, logged. <laughs> and off he went. And I want to show you what he bought us. <laughs> Bear in mind, the last thing I said to him was nothing that looks like actual jewellery. First thing he bought us was nine pairs of identical diamante earrings. <laughs> And just in case I was thinking, well, that's not enough diamond earrings for a girl who's got her ears pierced just the once, <laughs> another three pairs of almost identical diamond earrings. <laughs> and any ladies might well have noticed, especially near the front, that they're not from accessories, they're from Claire's accessories. <laughs> so I said to him, they're lovely, thank you. But you didn't... So you didn't make it to accessorise then? He said, I went to the girl's shop. <laughs> I said, yes, it's a 
12-year-old girl shop. <laughs> I reminded him that that's where we got presents for his nieces, who were 11 and 12, and he went, yeah, because they're girls. <laughs> his logic was brilliant. I thought he must have walked in Claire's accessories and gone, she wants anything from in here. <laughs> I'm probably lucky that he didn't come home with a tiara with fucking kittens on it. <laughs> Oh, great. <laughs> he said, I got you a couple of bangles. <laughs> I said, they're earrings. He said, they're bangles. I said, they're earrings. They're like, I'm off to McDonald's and I want to fit in. <laughs> I said, they've got a little hinge so that you can get them in your ears. He said, that's so that you can get them on your wrists. <laughs> he thought of everything apart from anything I told him. He said, I just hope that when you got to the till, you didn't tell the lady that they were for your girlfriend, because if you did, you might well be on some kind of fucking register now. <laughs> but what I've decided to do in order to help me relax is just to find things that make me happy, because I think generally whatever makes you happy makes you relaxed. And I thought at 35 that I knew everything that I liked, but in the last 12 months, I found two new things that I didn't know I liked. The first one... It was courtesy of a nice lady on Facebook who said, I understand that you like chocolate, but I don't know if you know this fact, that if you have a square of dairy milk and a square of galaxy at the same time, <laughs> it's so good <laughs> that it makes you do sex noises. <laughs> I mean, like, good ones. I don't mean like, oh, oh, get it out, get it out. <laughs> I can tell some of you are now working out your route home via a news agent. <laughs> Please said the show should be sponsored, because I'm telling you, oh, it's got to buy chocolate, the show's not sponsored. But if your future show is called Dairy Milliken, <laughs> then maybe things have changed. The other thing I didn't know I liked, I told you I don't have kids, a friend of mine had a baby in August last year. And I thought I'd buy a present for the baby, because that's what you do, isn't it? I went into Marxies, went into the baby section, had a wander around, realised that while I don't like children, I really love tiny clothes. <laughs> Picked up a couple of baby clothes for the actual child and then saw the smallest jeans I've ever seen. So I bought them and I didn't give them to my friend. <laughs> I brought them with us to show you. <laughs> they do look a little bit like aspirational jeans, don't they? Someday I'm gonna get in those fuckers. <laughs> But I don't know what to do with them. They've been in a bag since August last year. I can't put them in a cupboard because I don't have a cupboard for children's clothes. I can't bin them. Imagine finding a black bag with just those in. <laughs> I might have to kill a child to avoid looking weird. <laughs> but I was trying to think of different ways to justify keeping them, like, what if a baby visitor got caught in the rain? <laughs> but has slightly sinister qualities as well, though, doesn't it? Well, let's get you out of those wet things. <laughs> So I googled people who like tiny clothes, thinking there must be more than me, there's probably a website, there might even be a support group where mainly tiny jeans could fit in. Nothing. The only name that kept coming up over and over again was Cheryl Cole. <laughs> because she fucking wears them. <laughs> so if Cheryl Cole ever comes round to my house and shits herself... <laughs> she shits herself, she accidentally gets a little bit on her shoes. <laughs> He's only like a month old. A different friend of mine had a baby a month ago and uh, I said to my boyfriend, I'm going to go and get a present for the bane. And he knows me so well that he said, well, yeah, there, why don't you treat yourself? <laughs> So I picked up a little cord and a little pair of jeans for the actual child and then I saw those and I thought, I'm fucking having them. <laughs> but I, I, I'm aware that it's weird, don't worry about me, I'm fine. But I didn't want it to look weird to the lady on the till, so I made sure they all the same age group and all sort of matched colour-wise. And I put them on the counter and she said, these are lovely, aren't they? And I said, yeah, they're, they're for my friend, my friend's had a baby. And she said, oh, if that's the case, would you like some gift receipts? And I said, oh, just for the cord and the jeans, because I'm going to keep the plimsolls for me. <laughs> oh, shit. <laughs> My friend said, are you going to get a denim jacket to go with them? I said, I'm not trying to build a tiny Brian Adams. <laughs> um, I'm so grateful for you all to come tonight. Thank you very much for coming. I'm going to leave you on a story. Um, me and my fella don't really get nights off 
together very often. So when we do, we try to make the most of it. And uh, went out, and we call them like a date night. Went out on a date night recently. Had a curry, lovely curry. Got in, put a DVD on. Everything going really well. Half of the film started to get a little bit amorous. A little bit frisky. Which I suppose is one of the points of the date night. Seemingly, we'd forgotten that two hours before that, we'd had a curry. <laughs> Nevertheless, he went downstairs. Um, <laughs> don't mean for a glass of water. <laughs> I already told you I live in a flat, fucking work it out. <laughs> go downstairs is to do the bins. <laughs> and that should never be a euphemism for that. <laughs> she fancy, uh, she fancy doing the bins later on. <laughs> it doesn't work, does it? No. So he went, no, here's. Uh, do you know why I do it like that as well, like in that little stupid voice? No, here's. <laughs> it's not how I ask him for it, by the way. No, here's. You go down here later on. <laughs> Will it do the bin? <laughs> so he was. Okay. And there's no nice way of saying this to you, lovely people, but I could feel a fart brewing. <laughs> Nobody knows what to do, do they? There's no plan of action for this. So what I did, and I don't really know why I did this. Certainly don't know why I'm telling you lot. <laughs> Similar to in the film Rain Man, I started going, uh oh. <laughs> Uh-oh. Uh-oh. And he carried on. Because as he told me afterwards, he thought I was doing an impression of Beyonce. <laughs> but we've clearly not got the hang of the whole seduction thing. I think that's fairly evident from what I've told you so far, isn't it? But I walked in on him the other day and he was lying on the bed just in his pants, because you know how men think that's attractive. <laughs> And he had one bollock hanging out. <laughs> and I thought, I'm going to have to pull him on it. Uh, no. Uh, question him on it. Not pull him on it. <laughs> <laughs> if only they made that noise. If they made that noise, I'd never leave the little buggers alone. <laughs> <laughs> I said, do you know that you've got a bollock hanging out? He said, yes, I do. I put it out especially for you. <laughs> you lot have been such a joy. Thank you so much for coming out tonight. I've been Sarah Millican. Thank you very much. Good night. I'll tell you a little thing and then I'll let you go home. Uh, I've started doing this thing, maybe some of you already do this. I've started listening to people's conversations on the bus and on the train. And I was listening recently to two old ladies and they were talking about what they would do if they were men for a day. I thought, these answers are going to be pretty good because these old ladies have got this wealth of experience, you know. These answers are going to be quite insightful. And I was going out for lunch with three of my friends and I thought I'd ask them the same question. So I said to my first friend, what would you do if you were a man for a day? And without even thinking, she just went, I'd have a wank! <laughs> I said, God, it sounds like you need to. You sound a bit tense, pet. <laughs> Second friend, I said, what would you do? She said, I'd just do everything. And I thought she meant, like, in a sexual way, like, she'd fuck everything. <laughs> I said, is that what you mean? Like, you'd do everything? And she went, no, no, just all the little jobs around the house. <laughs> but these old ladies, different generation to me, my friends, in their 80s, they were. And one of them just said, Edith, what would you do if you're a man for a day? The other one said, no, in my look, I'd get a Tuesday. And what can you do on a Tuesday? <laughs> and my third friend, and I will leave you with this, my third friend took ages to answer. I said, come on, give us an answer. And she said, OK, uh, the first thing I would do is go and find my ex-boyfriend and thwack my hard penis across his face <laughs> and see how he likes it first anymore. <laughs>